Okay, here we have another species of mushroom. Fairly easy to identify. Known as the winter mushroom or sometimes called the brick cap because of the, its uh, brick-like color. The most uh, notable thing about this species is that it's a very late, late fall season, even into early winter season mushroom. Even though it's brown, and I generally don't rec uh, recommend that people get into brown species of mushrooms or white, is that it's fairly easy to distinguish by its color. The fact that it uh, grows in clusters up the sides of elm trees. As you can see, the stalk is black. It turns, it's actually light like, like this one <clears throat> and it turns black. Now the stalk is extremely tough. Uh, generally, I don't eat the stalk. Now it's very similar to the honey fungus in characteristics and flavor in the way that the cap, when wetted, it's not really slimy, it appears slimy here, but it's actually more, it's actually gelatinous. Feels like uh, gelatin. It is not greasy to the feel. It is more than slimy. Now when I want to test uh, mm, the feeling, the texture of something, I generally press it to my lips. to feel the texture mm, more sensitively. And that is more jelly-like than slimy. That is an identifying factor, or characteristic, I'm sorry, of the brick cap. Another good advantage of the winter mushroom, or brick cap, is that because it comes out so late, even during winter thaw periods after the snow has hit the ground, it is an excellent mushroom for freezing, and to me, it's similar in flavor to the honey fungus, or stump mushroom. Let's take a look at and discuss some things about the winter mushroom. Here you can see a small cluster of them growing out of the crotch of this tree. As I mentioned before, certain mushrooms favor certain types of trees. The winter mushroom predominantly favors elm trees, although I have found it on swamp willow and cottonwood. As you can see here, some are growing off the tree itself probably from the roots of this tree. As we peel back the leaves and expose the mushrooms, you'll see the difference in color and texture, which I am going to discuss this subject soon. Now notice how the young caps that are under the leaves are bright sulfury yellow, while the ones that were up through the leaves have that brick-like color. Here you can see some buttons just starting to break through the bark. Now here's something about a subject I mentioned earlier. Two species growing off the same tree. You could see the winter mushrooms and an oyster just starting to pop through the bark. That's an oyster mushroom. Here you can see more closely the variance in color. I've wetted these, so hopefully you can see the shininess and stickiness on the top. 
the tops after being wetted are sticky to the touch. Now this species is Agricus campestris, pinky or pink bottom as it is known. I wanted to show just how wide of a variance that individual specimens can be. As you can see, the little one on the left is about the size of a silver, silver dollar. The one on the right is about the size of a mature portabella. It's roughly 10 inches to 12 inches in now diameter. This species is easily distinguished, especially for a beginner. There are different types of mushroom that are known as beginner's mushroom. As you can see, the gills are pink. You can see on the bottom the gills are pink. The mushroom itself is white, but the gills are pink. Now white mushrooms can be extremely dangerous to pick because of um, poisonous ones like the Amanita, the destroying angel, which is extremely poisonous. Now it's Fort Prentiss chocolate, and the best place to look is in lawns and meadows but I have found them in the woods as well. Okay, here's an example of a pink bottom. And as you can see on close examination, it has almost, it's almost scaly-like on top. But this is a pink bottom because I picked it in with other pink bottoms. Okay, and it still has the veil. So we're going to open it up and then the pink gills should be exposed. As you can see, they're very lightly slight pink. They're very lightly slight pink. Hopefully you can see inside this, the gills. But the gills are not white. They're very lightly pink or almost brownish. There again, the problem is people get leery and confused. You must learn what the ident identifying factors of each mushroom is. They're not going to be exact and uniform. You're not going to find every specimen exactly the same. So it's important to learn the identifying characteristics of each type. Even in the button stage, the pink gills are evident. So, some buttons are quite large. As you can see, this is the button stage and it's as big around as my hand. Okay, what I have here is a large specimen of a pink bottom, fully opened up. And as you can see, I put my hand in comparison. You can see the size of these mushrooms, how big they actually can get. As you can see on the underside, the mushroom is already matured and the gills are brown, a dark brown to almost black. Okay, I want to take a moment here to discuss something that applies to many mushrooms and that's size and color. It's applied to identification. It's split and texture to it it's split on top or splits and cracks all over okay here I have a specimen of a white mushroom it's quite odd shaped and as you can see on the top it has almost like scales and you say well what is it it's very unusual shaped as you can see it's not round it's not rounded it's rather oblong shaped but when we turn it over, we reveal the pink gills. And as it was in with uh, other pink bottoms, uh, out of the same area, that was the indication that it would be a pink bottom and not something else. You can see the pink gills quite clearly. Here are a few more specimens of the same mushroom I wanted to show in this video. The reason why they're, these are cracked and scaly, and as you can see there's the one that's oblong shaped, and these are the same. We can turn them over, and again, this, the gills on this are light pink. But we can see 
there again that these are pink bottoms you must learn the identifying characteristics of each individual species size and shape alone this is an example that size and shape alone is not an indicator many things in nature are not carbon copies and they're not perfectly exact so you have to know what is the characteristic in this case it is the pink gills underneath the mushroom as I said we're having an unusually dry season this year so it caused these uh, specimens to dry out and crack real bad from the lack of rainfall now let's take a look at a beautiful mushroom the sulfur mushroom It gets its name from its color and prefers hardwood, that of dead or dying hardwood trees. The sulfur shelf, often referred to as the chicken of the woods. Okay, you want me to cut her off then? Yep. Don't cut it down too far. You don't want to rip that out of there. There you go easily identified and it's bright orange to yellow color and its underside which also has pores instead of gills. Now the pores of the sulfur shelf are extremely tiny compared to that of the hen of the woods. You can barely notice them. Now some people say it tastes like chicken, hence the name, but to me it's mildly salty and it seems to absorb the taste of whatever it's cooked in. Now the sulfur shelf is a thick meaty mushroom. This is an example of a young one. It's not even opened up yet. Once it gets old, it gets tough and rubbery. And it's not even worth bothering with. Now this next group of mushroom I like to discuss is very easily distinguishable. It is known by many different types of names. Pom-pom, lion's mane, monkey head. It is a tooth fungus and has long icicle-like hairs hanging down from it. Now there are two main types. One that is in a ball like a pom-pom. The other has branches that extend from it with the teeth hanging down from the branches. Its color is white unless aging. It is soft and delicate to the touch. Its flavor is quite good when sautéed in butter or of course used in soups and stews like many others. In this segment, I'd like to take a moment to offer some advice and some suggestions. Now, I am no authority or no expert on picking mushrooms. I simply have been picking them all my life since I was a little boy. I have taught my children to pick mushrooms, and I always taught them one uh, main rule. When they were in the woods picking with me, when in doubt, don't. It's not worth it. If you cannot clearly identify a mushroom, then you shouldn't even attempt to do anything with it. Now, a few other things that I'd like to suggest. I suggest that any, any material that you've seen on these videos, that you go to Wikipedia. There's just a wealth of information on many different types of mushrooms. Uh, there's a lot of material on the healing powers and medicinal value of them uh, with their tumor fighting properties and cancer fighting agents and antioxidants. We will end our series with two more types and finish our discussion on the next segment of our video.